Hiya, it's Linda Lee and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here and hanging out while I craft a little bit. What I'm working on today is finishing a single signature naked journal that I started probably about two years ago. And um, what had happened is this was being done at the request of somebody, but then they wanted different colors. So I kind of set this aside and it became just kind of a side pet project that I would pick up every now and then, but I'm going to finish it. Yay! I have so many unfinished um, <laughs> projects and I promise that this summer, before the summer is done, I'm going to finish at least five of them. Yes, I have more than five, um, but I'm going to finish at least five of them. So what this is, is um, the paper itself uh, was something that I usually have from underneath me. In fact, that's where a lot of the papers came from that are in this journal, um, from underneath. So I'm protecting not only the glass, but it's blocking from the glare with the light. And what I've done is I've dry decoupaged my very, very favorite piece of tissue that I've ever received. Um, I got it from a member who is not in group anymore. Um, but I've even gone online trying to find this tissue paper and I can't find it anywhere. So what I did is I dry decoupaged it onto a piece of paper that was on um, my desk. And I'll show you that in just a second on the flip side. I did a little bit of script stamping, um, but I didn't do anything to the surface of it other than, you know, kind of distress the edge just a little bit. I didn't really do a whole lot to it. Um, I do have some lace or crocheted um, pieces on the edges and I do have a flat piece of lace. I don't know if you can see it. And then some cheesecloth and other little random bits um, on the cover. I don't know for sure how this is going to tie shut yet. I do have a little piece of cotton that's been lightly coffee stained so it kind of goes instead of being bright white. Um, I don't know yet. I might work with that. Uh, you, we'll see as we go along. But the inside you can really see uh, the paper that was kind of underneath me. So while I was distressing, you can see the edges. Um, I do have some random script stamping. And then once I cut the paper down uh, to use it into, you know, a more workable size for, you know, what I'm doing, I decoupaged with Mod Podge. It was a glossy Mod Podge. Um, so you can kind of see a shine probably. Uh, the second layer of a napkin. So if you look really close, you can kind of see a little gray. It almost looks like a stamp, but it's the second layer of a napkin. So, and here's a little bit of it right here too. But I figured maybe you can see it. So anyway, um, you can kind of see my script stamping and that the ink blurred so it wasn't an archival ink. Um, that's one of the things that you can kind of pay attention to depending on what you're going to do. If you're going to do any kind of treatment over the top of your ink, if you use an archival, it will not blur. It won't reactivate once it gets wet and smear or anything. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah. So anyway, the papers, um, like I said, are pretty much, a lot of them are the under paper from when I'm crafting. So you can kind of see, I was doing like coffee dyeing with this stuff, um, my spray and finger painting technique. And this is a piece of packing paper that's perforated. Uh, it has a torn edge that I'm using as pockets and folded. So I just reinforced that bottom edge because it is perforated. I didn't want anything to get poked through the bottom, especially if we stuff, you know, a cardstock card or something in it. Uh, I do have some book pages that are just definitely simply coffee stained. This is avocado dyed. Um, actually, I think this is actually beet juice because see how it's a little more pink. 
Uh, avocado is more mauve and not this strong in color. So again, more papers from underneath me. And it's naked. I do have a little piece of, I think one piece of ledger paper, but the rest of it, again, a piece of paper that was underneath. And you can see this was one of those desk bladder um, calendars. So I don't throw these papers at all away. What I do is I just keep them and I set them aside when I put a fresh piece down. And then um, every now and then I'll go through and cut it up and put them in a pile so that I can incorporate them in what I'm doing. And that's what's making up the majority of these inside pages. So anyway, I think I have about 30 pieces of paper in here, maybe a couple few more. And we're gonna sew this signature in using the same technique that Betty uses. So let me get some wax thread. Now, the wax thread that I'm gonna use, um, I have two that I use the most. I got them from Kelly's Bygones Variety Gift Shop. Um, I can't find my white one, which is probably what I would have preferred to use, but I think I'm going to use I'm going to use the dark one because this is a little brighter than I want it to be. So I'm going to use the dark one. Um, when you're measuring your thread for your signature, what if this is for the newbies. There's a lot of girls out there that are saying, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but I just measure pretty much three times and then a little more the length of my journal. So I'm going to use this needle here. It's got a pretty good size eye, so it's easy to thread. And I want my ends to be on the inside. So what I need to do is go in, then out, then I put both my ends in the needle and I go in the middle and then tie it on the inside. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. I just wanna make sure that this is pretty well lined up. So here's my middle. I'm going to use a binder clip to kind of hold it in place. I have one right here. Now there are some pieces that are smaller, but that's okay. So this is a pretty sharp needle. I don't really have to do anything special um, to get this um, through. I can just push it, but my hands aren't as strong as they used to be. So what I usually do is I use my a pair of um, the flat pliers that I use with my jewelry making. So, oops, let's try this again. And you don't have to go through everything at one time. You can actually just kind of push through a few pieces at a time. I am gonna just go for it. So, this side 
There it is. Okay. strings through and leave the other one sticking out. Okay, now I'm going to thread them both and then go back through the inside. Oops. So if we look, take a look on the inside, find the middle, somewhere, the middle, <laughs> there's our papers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the middle of all of it, and then we're going to tie it in a knot. Pull it tight and knot it. I think that's about the middle. <laughs> if it's not, it is now. It's just what we're going with. So I missed the middle just by a little bit, um, but I'm not going to pull this out. I'm going to leave it in there. I just go with it. You'll find when it comes your turn that that's a common occurrence for it to not be in the middle. But out here it is. See. Okay, and I'm just going to pull these tight. And put one on either side of the center string. And just tie this in like a double knot. Once and twice. That's your three pamphlet stitch. So now the technique that I used by putting them both in the middle at the same time, the reason behind that is um, normally you would go in, then out, then down, then in, and then you're going in again. And the second time you go into this hole, a lot of times you split the thread that's already through that hole. So by kind of coming out and doing them at the same time, you're saving that potential from happening so that um, the, the strings are not compromised as far as their overall strength. So if that makes any sense, I think it does. So I'm not going to really I don't think I'm going to hang anything from these. I'm just going to cut it because, like I said, this is going to be a naked journal. So these pieces I'll just set aside. I'll always use them for something. And now I have my journal. Finally, it's finished. Well, it's in one piece. It's sewn together. It's not decorated yet. So that's what we're going to do next is a little bit of um, embellishing on the tabs. I'm really not going to do any distressing on the papers um, or stamping, I don't think. I'm just going to use some glue 
I didn't even do any sewing on this one and I usually do sewing on almost everything. I'm just going to use some glue. And I have, put this away. I have my box here. You can't see it. It's just off to the side. Um, this here is my box of pieces and bits that I use for um, my snippet rolls. So I've got some stuff that's already cut that I can probably use as tabs, just gluing them down. These are pretty white. Most everything is cream. I don't know. I kind of like the white though. Maybe I'll use a couple. Um, that's kind of the wrong pink anyway. Here's a couple of the little flowers that are in there. Maybe I'll use a little seam binding. I get the seam binding from um, Kelly Snow as well, the Bygones Variety Shop. Is this too yellow or orangey? No, nope, that works. Maybe I'll use a couple pieces of these. Sorry if I'm mumbling. I got some muslin. I don't know, all kinds of stuff to work with. So let me put this back up here. And let's go ahead and figure out which pages we're going to put some of these tabs on. So I do want to put something here. and here. Nothing on this one. So should I put a pocket here or just let it be? Should I put a pocket there? Or a tuck spot maybe? I don't even know how I'm going to keep this thing closed yet. Okay, we'll get there. Let's see. glue stick actually works pretty well on holding holding fabrics to paper but I am because I do have this bottle of Fabri-Tac that I'm trying to finish because um, I have a newer bottle I'm going to use this up So when I was talking about projects that are unfinished, I was not exaggerating if, of course I said I might have done it in a different take. I have probably almost a dozen unfinished projects. I am the queen of starting, but I have a real difficulty for whatever reason finishing because I get distracted and inspired with something else and that other project never got finished. But my goal this summer is to finish at least half of them. So I want to do, you know, five or six. This one is being the first because I think this one was the oldest. 
I have um, some design team or a design team journal that I'm making um, for Daisy Collins's Tsunami Rose group using her um, a digital kit. I definitely need to finish that because what happened is I started that and then I went to back to work from being retired. So that whole thing got set to the side. I'm going to be working on that. This is just wax paper. Um, nothing really sticks to wax paper very well. So that's all I did is I just went behind it so that none of the glue kind of went here while that gets tacky. Um, I'm going to do the same with a different color fab or lace here. Thing right there. So yeah. Um, what else? I have a journal that I was gonna make for swap that I was not able to complete. I have everything in a box. Um, if you guys know me, I do, I have my projects in boxes. So that box that I just showed you all those little pieces of paper with, the, that's my snippet project box. So this here, was not in a box, but almost everything else that I have that is a project is in some sort of contained. Okay. So this little lace has a front and a back. See this little flower? That's the back. This is the front. So I'm gonna put that one right here, I think. Fabri-Tac a lot. Um, I don't like how stringy it is, but it really does work well on fabric. So, which is what it was made for. see me I haven't even paid attention if I'm in screen or not or in frame oh my nails um my nails if you like them go to color street strip club and you can get your very own um, these are from Kelly Snow is one of her little side groups that she has. Or actually it's not a side group, it's just another uh, little page. 
and her nails are from the color street as well so this is aspen blue and um, the sparkle is home sleet home If you guys could see my craft room, it's about half the size because I have so much stuff that's really stacked in here. Uh, we helped a friend move not too long ago, so now I have um, a lot of her mom's old stuff. Uh, we got like about 40 rolls of, of wrapping paper. Um, a lot of it's vintage. Um, and I have a wedding gown. I have um, some junk jewelry. Uh, I have all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna do uh, a little bit of a share video, you know, sharing what these things are. But I wanted to make something because I haven't made something in a while. It seems like I'm always showing you stuff and I'm not doing anything, right? So today, I'm doing something. And let's put this here. I want to save these little ones for the little papers. Hmm. Maybe this one. So I'll probably edit some of this out. Maybe, maybe not. Because I know you guys like to watch the crafting stuff, but when you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over. Instead of being fun, it gets just, oh, geez, move on to the next, right? <laughs> this is going to be all nice and frilly on the edge. starting to rain. I love when it rains when I'm recording for you guys. It ends up being so nice and calming. <laughs> if you don't mind. This one isn't long enough to put a lot more glue on there. Oh well, let's see. What else can I put there? A little piece of something something? Can you hear it rain? It's not raining real hard, at least not yet. I don't know if you guys can hear my guy 
He's playing his video game and he's laughing, so it's pretty loud. <laughs> and let's see. Need a bigger piece right up here. Okay, I think I've done with all of the edging. I think. I don't know. We shall see. What I do want to do now, though, is figure out how I'm going to tie this shut. Am I just going to use this? Or am I going to use this hmm what do you think I think I almost like this a little better hi it's Linda Lee again and through the magic of video editing <laughs> It's now four days later, and I'm back at my table, and we're going to work on this a little more. Um, I kind of decided, I think when, when we left the other video, I was trying to decide on how to close this. But I think what I'm going to do is actually sew a button on here, um, and then some kind of um, maybe a ribbon on the back so that it can come forward and tie in a bow. Um, at least that's my thought, my intention. I just don't know for sure how that's going to work. I've never done it before, but let's give it a go. So, uh, this is the one I was looking for. I think I might use like this button. Um, but I kind of need it to be elevated a little bit. So maybe if I sew a button underneath it, just see how these holes line up a little bit. So what I'm doing is just making sure the holes line up so that they're similar so that when I sew this on this actually elevates the button a little bit so it's not as flush that
that way it gives us a little more of a lip to, to wrap probably the seam binding because this here so I'll attach it on the back side and then we'll pull it to the front side so that we can wrap it around the button and tie a pretty bow okay well, I guess Um, but anyway, I've selected these buttons so far. Um, I don't know. I think some of them are just a little too dark or the wrong size. I keep coming back to this one. Um, this one is kind of cool. This one, I believe... I'm not sure what kind of material this is. I think this is acrylic. This is abalone, mother of pearl. This one here is acrylic as well. And although I love the size of it and the design, I think it's kind of the wrong color. So we're gonna set that one aside too. This one here, um, I want to build the button up a little bit. So I was thinking maybe using this type of button because it'll already be elevated. Um, but I, that's not, I think it's a little smaller than I would want. So that one I think is out too. This one is a little too gray, too small. This one might be too transparent. Yeah. These two are pretty much the same. Ooh, this has got some really cool color on the back. If I use it backwards. What do you think of that one? Hmm. I'm still coming back to this one. I like this pink one if it was more this size. But it doesn't really go either. So, I think this is the button. So, what I want to do is, like I say, elevate it. So, if I put another button underneath it, how do these holes line up? So if I put this button underneath and this button on top, it'll give us more space without putting too much tension on the paper because I'm actually gonna sew it through the paper, not to just the lace where it's off the edge. I wanna sew it to the paper because I want it in more. And we need, I think, to support it here with maybe a little piece of fabric. And maybe I can sew this button on the inside. So in essence, we're stacking the buttons. But that would give us a little bit more support. So let's leave those three there. I need to clear the area of my buttons. here and so through it
Now that purple dries clear. So. I just wanted it to make it a little tacky in the middle. While the Fabri-Tac does its thing all the way around. And thread, 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 thread. Maybe I will use, isn't this a cool spool of thread? It was in a sewing box that was gifted to me. Somebody's old collection. I inherit a lot of other people's old stuff now that folks know I collect and kind of reuse. This here is a pretty big needle. So I'm not sure, but it's got a really sharp point on it to go through the paper fabric and lace. So I'm sure there's probably a better option. I just I'm going to go with it. Okay. So I'm not concerned about hiding my string or the tail of the thread. Oops, sorry.
See, now that the holes are all lined up, I can just go through it a few more times. Okay, I think that's exactly what I was doing, or wanted. <laughs> Let me go through this one more time and tie one more knot. So now that that's done, let's see, I have the other, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, I have that other little button here so it gives me a little bit more space. Now I need to attach some of this on the back probably in the same manner. Tie this here, sew it through the paper, and tie to here. Ta-da! <laughs> I think that's what I was going for. What do you guys think? So it's not pulled real tight. It's just keeping it closed, which is all I really wanted to do. And then also as this happens to maybe grow, then this can be tied looser and looser. In fact, maybe crinkle this up some more. So 
so we have it looped through the crocheted lace instead of sewing it because if I sew it then that'll loosen the fibers and weaken the, the tie and I don't want it to eventually fray so I think this here is a little bit better of a plan and then you can either wrap it and loop it through but what I really wanted to do is tie it in a bow So there it is. Now it's finished. It's a finished journal. The only thing I don't have is a little bit of decorating. So I think that's what I'll do next. So we'll set this aside and make a couple little things to go inside it. So what I've got here is a little bit, I have two pieces of coordinating cardstock that kind of goes with our monochromatic type coffee that stained colors. And I want to make some tags. So like this paper is really cool, but it's got the calendar stuff on the back of it. So it's kind of hard to write on. Well, not hard, it'd be kind of easy, but it's a little distracting. So I think what I want to do is glue some of this paper onto here so that we can cut out some tags. Oh, and I wanted to show you this here. This is avocado dyed st stained paper. So if you kind of look at this, this is my spray technique. So I actually sprayed these. Um, this, this one I sprayed a couple of times so that it's a little more saturated with color. But remember when I showed you this slide off? Yeah, so we don't even really have to untie that. Um, but when I showed you this page and I said that it was avocado, but I thought it was beet, um, if you can see the color difference, see how this is more pink and this is more peachy? This is the avocado. So you can kind of see the difference a lot more um, with the side by side there. I guess that's gonna work out okay. It came off and back on fairly easy without putting too much stress on, you know, everything that's in there. I like it. Okay, so let's make a couple of tags, uh, maybe a little scrappy pad. Okay, so give that a chance to tack up a little bit and maybe do the same thing with this other one, but with this paper instead, since these are so similar in size. Let's see. My cat's meowing at the, at the door, and my mom's on the other side in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. 
they're so funny. I think it's all of the smaller papers. All right, and when I was trimming, I have a piece here. I think that's, yep, it's folded. So we'll use that as the top. Okay, let's stay here somewhere. like to make sure that my staples aren't catching or snagging, especially using fabrics. Although with this, it'll probably catch no matter what you do. So let's go ahead and put a little lace on it. So we got a little scrappy pad. Get rid of that real straight edge. Okay. All right, now I love this paper. I think this is off from the calendar. Well, I can take some of this. Okay, I am going to sew this together too, I think. I just need... <laughs> I'm going to sew this just like I did the big one. with it not being as thick it'll be a little easier on my hands once you get a signature that's more than you know like 10 12 pages it's a little harder to work with and now I'm gonna put the second one through the needle and move that to the side a little bit move approximately in the middle this like I did the other one. So now I got a little mini booklet for inside the journal.
So I didn't really put any pockets in here, which I still can. I think though, I just want to put this in here. And put my little, where did I put the book, the little tablet? There it is. My little scrappy pad can go right there. And then I can do something similar for the back pockets. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put the tickets back there. I'll put um, two tickets, or two tags, and a couple of tickets. Okay, let's make the tags. I'm going to make them a little shorter. So... I do a lot of measuring. At least I try not to. Approximately the same size. See, normally I would sew these, but I'm not doing any sewing in this journal. So we just have to go back and glue wherever it wasn't sticking. That should be good. And the purple dries clear, which is really nice. This is just a one inch circle punch, if anybody wants to know the size. Now, just do a little bit of decorating on these. Just cutting a little bit of that raw edge off. Sorry, this one a little bit. Okay, so now, now these look kind of plain, don't they? Without any kind of distressing. Um, I know for these, I can put some toppers on here. Okay, let's play with those.
I'm carrying out the tickets. Okay, one more ticket. I think I'm gonna put a little more on these. I think I'm gonna do a couple buttons. This will dry clear, like this is doing, drying clear. Oops.
So, I'm done. You don't have to undo this little bow if you didn't want to. So let's actually clear some space. I'll give you a little flip through. So I have a completed project. Yay! I'm pretty excited. Hiya once again and welcome to the end of the video where I give you a little flip through of um, the journal. I probably also put a clip of this in my uh, journal playlist too so that you can kind of see this. Um, what it is is a single signature journal. It is made of paper, the whole thing. So the outer cover is a little bit thicker because it's got some dry decoupaging with tissue paper on the outside and some Mod Podge on the inside with a napkin and some stuff. We'll show you that when we get inside. What we have on the outside though, first let me give you the size. I'm including the lace. It's about six and a half inches by nine and I made a button closure. So what I did is I sewed a button to the outer paper and um, then kind of loop seam binding through the lace in the back. So this isn't very tight. It's very actually very loose. This will slide right off the button, but it can also come untied so that if this grows just in, um, you know, putting stuff in it or adding to it, uh, this can expand and change as well. So I can actually, oh, I pulled it into a knot. This actually comes untied and it's just looped through the back lace. See? All right, so I have all kinds of different crocheted trims on the edges and some other little bits in there that I'll show you as we get there. Um, but yeah, I reinforced this little area here. I have a piece of muslin and another button. And then it is sewn through the paper. I have a small button on the inside and then the larger button. Basically, I stacked the buttons like that so it gave us a little more of a lip for the, the seam binding to actually catch over it. So when we open it, you can kind of see the inside that I mentioned was Mod Podged. Um, this is kind of a work surface paper as well as many of the papers that are in the journal. So what I did is I used one of those work surface papers that I cover my whole table with and I cut it down into um, a workable piece to become the cover. And we have a glossy Mod Podge over the top and you can see where I've actually done a little bit of script stamping. There is a second layer piece of napkin that's here. That's where we get these little gray bits um, that almost look like a stamp underneath, but it's really a, a napkin. We have all kinds of those work surface papers that I mentioned, as well as this here is packing paper and it's got a little perforated edge on the bottom so I reinforced it and just made little pockets out of a torn edge. And this is kind of like a little accordion fold. I made a little tag and this actually flips over so we have this surface area to write on and it also opens this way where I have a little ticket and a little scrappy pad avocado paper, coffee paper. Um, I think that that's all that's in here. Okay, I think I was getting a call there, so it interrupted my recording. Um, so anyway, I think I was just simply telling you about my little scrappy pad, that it is coffee stained. I have a little bit of lace trim on the top. I made a little booklet 
out of the scrappy paper. Um, I glued it to some cardstock because the back side of this was a calendar. Uh, and then we have more copy or coffee dyed paper and avocado stained paper. A little flip. So it's just a, just for easy journaling or list making. Um, but it is removable from the journal. And then we have, um, like I said, crochet trim on a lot of the pages. So the pages all vary in size and colors because they came from different um, projects and sources. A little bit of muslin, a crocheted piece. This actually was um, a cut remnant. And I think this is the only piece of ledger paper in the whole thing. Um, the rest are my, like I said, work surface papers that are usually under me with different things that I'm working on. Here's a piece of the, the blotter calendar piece of paper. So that's what that little booklet was made of. And we've got just pages and pages of nakedness. <laughs> so there's no uh, distressing on the edges, no script stamping, uh, no stenciling, no stamping. So just blank, 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 all for your writing purposes. We get to the back part, more lace, muslin, crocheted pieces, but once we get to all the way in the back, um, another side of that packing paper that I have folded and reinforced, and one the opposite side does still have some pockets. So I've got some little tickets. These also are not really embellished other than the little bits of lace. Um, this one just has strings glued to the top of it on top of a piece of muslin. Okay, so some people are persistent when they call and I just got interrupted again. I'm not sure kind of where I was. I think I showed you my tickets already. So, my little naked tickets, nothing on the back sides. And then, Two little naked tags. And then this, and then this, and then the back side. So then we just simply can retie it again. And that's that. Thank you so much for hanging out while I finish this little project. I appreciate your time and patience. I know this was a longer video for me to have, um, but it was worth it, I think, because I have a finished little journal. And that is all. Thanks again for hanging out with me and I will link all the stuff that I mentioned earlier in the description of this little video so that you can find stuff if you want to. And I will see you again in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.